Uh, we'll move on to our final topic now, which is it just broke this afternoon. We're recording this uh, Thursday, 17th of August 2017. Pauline Hanson, she showed up to Question Time in the, the Senate today wearing a full burqa covering the entire face. Uh, now, it's it's come out of nowhere in sort of my my opinion because Pauline Hanson's not really known for pulling stunts like this so uh, she she came in in a burqa and then she threw it off dramatically to uh, ask a question of George Brandis whether you know his government would consider banning the burqa and uh, George Brandis he said like the government wasn't going to ban the burqa and he like and, and, and he said like you know this is a disgraceful like insult to you know Muslims and you know I you know work with with like the Islamic you know community and like even like got teary and like it was like it was it was really like I, I, I couldn't believe how like how emotional George Brandis got and it was interesting that uh, his uh, answer it got a standing ovation from Labor and the Greens but his own side pretty much stood still or sat still should I say I think that um... George Brandis could try out for home and away. Personally, his uh, his acting was remarkable. Uh, really tr showing his uh, true colours there, Georgie boy, getting a rapt of support from the Greens and Labor. Um, and he obviously doesn't believe in freedom of expression or free speech to a large extent, does he? And, and it's a debate anyway whether the burqa is actually a requirement of you know Islam. I mean, there's there, there's plenty of like uh, Muslim women who you know don't wear it. There's some Muslim women who don't even wear any head covering at all. Well, it's 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 about liberty, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's about individual choice, and to ban a whole class of people from. For a whole group of people, a whole religion of people wearing an item of clothing is, uh, well, it's it's, er it's, well, it's erroneous and it's liberal, and it's, it doesn't really, um, it isn't really Australian. But to the same extent, putting a curtain around a swimming pool and saying that men can't swim here, it's only women, Muslim women, who can swim in this area, that's also inherently wrong and bad as well, and, it, and it's un that's un-Australian as well. Um, but definitely there are security concerns with the burqa um, and also banking as well or going into a bank, someone through an armed robbery or going into Parliament, I believe that um, uh, that, that was interesting. Anyone could walk into Parliament um, disguised in a burqa and, and it's a true um, a security concern. So balancing liberty and um, national security um, is, is crucial. Uh, in this debate, but also realizing when in Rome, who was a Roman do, and trying to change someone else's culture, such as erecting a swimming pool or modesty laws or whatever could come in, uh, that that is wrong as well. Yeah, I, I think the uh, definitely the burqa is over the top for um, for Australia. The fact that it covers you know the whole face. I mean, we live in a society where you know you're supposed to see people's faces, and it was interesting the reaction of uh, the senators there. I mean, clearly they were confronted by Pauline Hanson wearing that. So you know, did she, you know, did she prove a point there by you know? Uh, highlighting that yes it is you know a confronting uh, thing to you know people who you know they're they're seeing seeing you know well you know who we think are you know women underneath that I mean it's it, it's just not the way our society works I don't have a problem with the burqa I have a problem with the niqab which has about this much of the woman you can see. And it's very hard to judge uh, and, and gain an understanding of someone's character. You can't look at someone's face. If someone's hair and ears are covered, I don't have so much of a problem with that. But if you can't see any of them, bar a one and a half inch gap here, that is a problem. Um, and I don't know how we can deal with it. Can, can we go around uh, the western suburbs of Melbourne and Sydney and and find people for wearing burqas. I don't really know how we deal with it. Um, it's it's a really difficult. Uh, it's very nuanced. Um, there's a lot to consider. 
But it's certainly, yeah, as I said, it's, it's certainly not not something that we want to see, you know, more of. We, you know, we we, do, we don't want to see women, like, most of the time, they, they are forced to, uh, forced to wear it. Like, we, it's, it's clearly something we don't want to see more of. Well, we don't want to see more of a lot of things that um, some of the more fundamentals and even some of the more mainstream elements of Islam bring into Australian society. Child marriage, I was reading in the Australian again, a 14 year old young lady got married to a 13, 37 year old man, I believe by the local imam. Uh, you, you're seeing increased uh, child or female genital mutilation, which is disgusting. Um, and uh, there's, there's very, very high, extraordinarily high uh, amounts of welfare recipients among Muslim migrants. So they're not actually going to work. A lot of them are not um, assimilating very well. And there obviously are exceptions. I've met some great Persians who have been doctors, engineers, what have you. You can't stroke with a broad brush. Generally speaking, there are a lot of elements with Islamic culture that aren't compatible with Australian culture, liberal culture. Uh, do you think, like Hanson, politically, like it, it was the right thing to to do this stunt to like bring attention to the issue, or is it, you know, it was did it did it go too far for like a part uh, to do this in Parliament? I don't think it went too far, but what her motives were were that were they to start a frank and open discussion about um, the appalling treatment of some Islamic women uh, and the niqab and the burqa and, and all that. If, if that was, if it was to stimulate public discussion, like, like what Trump does, for instance, makes an outlandish comment, but it stimulates discussion and actually gets people talking to each other about an issue. That can be highly productive, mind you, but if it was just to gain a few cheap votes, uh, that's a bit more sinister. I'm not for that, but if, if her motives were genuine and pure of heart, and they were to start a discussion about the poor treatment of women in Islam, I have no problems with it. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, it's got a, it's a rally to supporters around, around us, so it's certainly got them uh, energised, and it's uh, earned a ridicule from, uh, you know, the usual, uh, <laughs> the usual people who've never liked her anyway, so, yeah, uh, I, I do hear that she's got more to more more to say on on the the burqa. So I'm sure she'll you know come up with you know more of an explanation of you know why she did this in the manner that uh, she did this. But